Hello my lovely students how are you all a very hearty welcome to this mind blowing platform physics wala my name is nupur sharma and today we are going to do glimpses of india glimpses of india this is a beautiful chapter this chapter actually explains that how beautiful india is now who doesn't like to travel everybody loves to travel and when we travel we get a lot of experiences we see a lot of beautiful sceneries we discuss about the culture of the place we discuss about the beauty of the place the monuments there and a lot of things okay whenever you visit a state uh like in this chapter also we are going to visit various states we are going to visit goa we are going to visit kurg and we are going to visit assam now whenever we discuss about states whenever we talk about states the first thing that uh, you know that comes to our mind is that what kind of you know uh, environment that place, uh, place has what kind of weather it has what kind of food people eat there and what kind of culture do they practice what kind of religion that they practice there and how do they live there okay obviously that everybody needs air water soil everybody has the same requirements same set of requirements but obviously their way of living is very different now in this chapter we are going to find out the way of living of three states yes we are going to get in touch with the culture of these three places okay now let's start okay so we'll have an overview then line by line explanation and in the end we are going to discuss the important key points if we talk about the overview this chapter includes three short stories okay there are three short stories here a baker from goa by lucio rodrix okay this story is about a baker and relates to the old portuguese days here they are talking about old portuguese days the second one is kurg okay the second one is kurg by lukesh abril okay and they talk about kurg kurg is quite a beautiful place in karnataka and the author describes the weather environment people wildlife and the landscape of kurg so basically when you're reading this chapter you will feel as if you are you know reading a geography chapter because we'll get to know a lot of things about it you know we'll learn a lot of things about it and the last one is a tea from assam by arup kumar datta okay so uh, in this story we'll come across two friends they are discussing about the beauty of assam they are exploring the tea gardens there and you know how beautiful the tea gardens look even if you have ever been to darjeeling or if you have ever been to palampur in himachal pradesh you can see that the tea gardens are very you know so beautiful the you know there's uh, the scenery is so mesmerizing that you just fall in love with it and you're actually going to fall in love with all the three chapters all the three short stories here so okay now let's start so the first one is a baker from goa so as the name suggests we are going to talk about the bakers from goa here in this chapter we are going to talk about old portuguese days okay now before starting this chapter before starting this story i would like to share something with you do you know that goa uh, that india was also once ruled by the portuguese people okay we have come across a lot of invaders you know uh, britishers came to uh, rule on our country mughals came french came and even the portuguese people came when the portuguese people came they left their imprints on goa even if you visit goa today and you visit fontenas there is a beautiful place in goa called fontenas when you visit fontenas you are going to fall in love with that place because they have still kept that portuguese culture alive you know alive uh, when you visit fontenas you can see beautiful houses there with blue pink green and very lively shades yellow shades most of the uh, houses are of yellow color and they appear to be so beautiful you sometimes feel that you are not in goa not in india but in a foreign country when you visit there and why does it happen you know why those houses are still beautiful why are those maintained do you know that the portuguese government still they send money to those people the owner of their houses okay portuguese people used to live there still a lot of portuguese people live there who have you know got married to the indian people who have you know uh, you know uh, somehow they remained in india and even the people who have went there and the houses are occupied by the indian population 
the people from portuguese still i told you that the portuguese government still you know sends the money for the maintenance of those beautiful houses they want that their touch the touch of their culture should be alive in goa people should experience this thing people should watch that how beautiful the houses were how they used to live there they you know wanted to maintain their legacy so that is why they have still you know they are still sending the money for the maintenance of those beautiful houses and i'm telling you that if you visit goa it is a must visit you must visit that place you must you know uh, come across those beautiful houses and the type of food that they eat their food is very famous you know they are there are a lot of bakeries there and still that thing is impact you know intact when i visited goa i remember that the bakeries there were Oh my god they were terrific they are nothing compared to the bakeries in india the food that they prepared the, the the cakes their cookies that they prepare the the taste is so good it is so relishing uh, it is so fresh that uh, you can you know you really think that okay we are not in india we are somewhere else and the taste is really so good so here in this chapter we are also going to talk about the bakers only we are also going to talk about the taste of those tasty breads that you find in goa still okay now our, our elders are often heard romanticizing nostalgically about those good old portuguese days the portuguese and their famous loaves of bread now a person is saying that our elders he is talking about his elders that they are often heard romanticizing romanticizing means remembering they are fondly remembering the old portuguese days nostalgically nostalgically means emotionally when you feel emotional about past okay when you feel emotional about past whenever you remember past and you become teary eyed you think you know nostalgically about it you're very emotional okay you know what kind of uh, days they, those were and they are also you know uh, often talking about the old portuguese days the portuguese people and their love for the loaves of bread you know the portuguese people they used to love the loaves of bread do you know what is a loaf of bread the loaf of bread is a fresh loaf uh, you know the bread that uh, comes in our houses in india that is you know cut in slices now this loaf of bread is the you know uh, a piece which is not cut into pieces okay those eaters of loaves might have vanished but the makers are still there we still have amongst us the mixers the molders and those who bake the loaves those age old time tested furnaces still exist the fire in the furnaces has not yet been extinguished those eaters of loaves eaters of loaves have gone you know portuguese people they have gone they have you know left uh, india a very long time ago but the eaters of bread but the makers are still there the people who used to make the breads are still there you know earlier if we talk about goa in the goan culture people used to consume bread a lot now a lot of other religions and a lot of other kind of people have lived there and they have assimilated into into the culture so they are eating something different also even when you go to goa you are going to find the naan and chapatis and parathas there but the earlier in earlier times if we talk about the only influence they had the only breakfast they used to do the only food they that that they used to have was the bread because they were quite inspired by about by the portuguese people they say that we still have the mixers you know to in order to make the bread you have to prepare a mix then the molders are also there the molders means basically the shapers okay those who mold the bread and those who bake the loaves everybody is still there those age old time tested furnaces those furnaces basically those furnace furnace what is furnace this is a furnace furnace is a place where you know bakers you know bake used to bake, uh, bake the bread they are still there and the fire has not been extinguished it means that it has not been put off the fire has not been put off as i told you if you go to goa still you you'll fall in love with the bakeries you'll see the bakeries there the bakeries are still using the time tested old methods uh, of you know baking the cakes and breads and everything they have not changed they are not baking those things in ovens like you would see in other country uh, you know other states that they bake in in an oven in an electric oven or something like that but they are still baking it in the old furnaces you know a kind of uh, wall uh, like this okay the furnace that you see here is you know a perfect example of the furnaces that used to be there
Now, the fire in the furnaces has a thud and jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places. The fire in the furnaces has a thud and jingle. The thud and jingle, basically the noise, the noise of the traditional baker's bamboo. They used to use, you know, bamboo for making the breads and everything. And you can still hear the noise because still it is being practiced. Still they are using the bamboo to make the, you know, breads and all. And it heralding his arrival in the morning the bamboo is also a signal of their arrival earlier when the bakers used to come they used to make the sound of the bamboo like jhang jhang and when the jhang jhang sound used to be played it means that the you know he is arriving heralding his arrival actually means announcing its arrival he used to announce his arrival that okay I'm coming to distribute the bread can still be heard in some places maybe the father is not alive but the stern son still carries on the family promotion these bakers are even today known as padre in Goa they are called padder or padre as you can say padder they are still called and the father is not alive it means that the fathers also used to make breads and they used to you know distribute the breads they were the bakers they used to distribute it and everything now the son has carried out that profession he is still a baker and called padder in Goa and uh, they are still carrying out that profession very efficiently during our childhood in Goa, the baker used to be our friend, companion and guide. He used to come at least twice a day. Once when he set out in the morning on his selling round and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket, the jingling thunt of his bamboo woke us up from sleep and we ran to meet and greet him. Now, he, the writer here, he's, you know, thinking about his childhood days. He's saying that the baker was his friend, his companion and his guide. It means that he had such a close relationship with the baker. The baker used to come twice to their home. You know, twice he used to come. When a person is frequently visiting your house, he is coming to your house daily and even twice a day to your house, he will become a friend. He was kind of a friend. He was kind of a guide. He used to tell, you know, stories to uh, children and he used to be so friendly with the children. Now he is saying that once when he set out in the morning, once he used to come, when he used to set out in the morning, once in the morning he used to come to give the breads and once and the other time the, uh, and the second time he used to come was when he had emptied his basket, okay, in the evening when he had sold all his, you know, um, uh, bakery items he used to come back and the children used to meet and greet him in the morning the jingling thud the voice of the bamboo what what kind of sound does bamboo produce it is like jhang jhang it is like thud thud the jingling sound this sound actually woke up the children you know the children used to wake up from the sound of this bamboo so they knew that like like if we sort of see today uh, nowadays there are a lot of hawkers which come in your area there must be a lot of hawkers, there must be a sabzi wala that comes in your uh, street, there must be, um, you know, uh, even the garbage collectors come at your home and they play a particular sign of, uh, kind of sound and uh, a lot of other kind of hawkers come to your place and their sound is quite familiar. You recognize from their voice, from a very, you know, far ahead, you can recognize that, okay, that particular person is coming, okay, our sabzi wala is coming and uh, that particular hawker is coming fruit seller or anything like that you can recognize its voice now the children in those times they used to recognize the sound of the baker because baker used to come so frequently at their houses why was it so was it for the lover love of the loaf not at all the loaves were bought by some paskeen or bastine the maid servant of the house what we longed for were those bread bangles which we chose carefully. Sometimes it was sweet bread of special make. The maker made his musical entry on the scene with the jhang jhang sound of a specially made bamboo staff. Why was it so? Now he's saying, why did we used to love, malab, why we waited for the baker? We didn't wait for the baker, wait for the baker because he used to bring the loaves and we didn't do it out of the love for the loaves. Why we used to wait for the waker was because we were in love with the bangles, the bread bangles that he used to bring. Now he's also telling that the breads were, you know, taken by some paskin or bastin. Her paskin and bastin means the servants of the house. 
okay he is saying that the servants of the house used to collect the breads we didn't used to do it we were waiting for the bread bangles he used to you know love the bread bangles that he used to prepare which we chose carefully he used to say that sometimes it was sweet bread of special make you know children love different kind of things children do not love the breads and everything he used to love the bread bangles bread bangles basically they are like donuts okay it can be like a uh, kind of donuts because donut is also you know round in shape and it has a you know a, the texture similar to that of bread so they used to wait for that the baker made his musical entry as i told you that the baker used to you know announce his arrival by making the sound of jhang jhang from his bamboo that he had specially made so that he can actually alarm the people that yes i am coming now as i to, uh, told you that the bakers the bakers you can still see the bakers in goa how do they look like they usually come on a bicycle and on the cycle they have a huge basket at in behind and that you know a basket is covered with a blue uh, uh, you know trampen paper it is covered with a blue cover and they usually make the sound with the help of a bhopu it's kind of a horn that they use in the bicycle they do not use the bamboo sound of the bamboo anymore they use that bhopu of the bicycle you know uh, to announce their arrival and you can still see those bakers and the people still you know collect the uh, breads from there you know i lived in goa for uh, you know um, a month uh, even more than a month i uh, stayed there for one and 1.5 month and when i stayed there even the bread wala used to come at our house the house that we had rented and he used to come there and he used to you know do that pop pop sound he used to make and we used to collect the bread and you know it is a custom it is a custom we yeah, even i you know stopped preparing chapatis and paranthas we used to you know love those breads the breads were so fresh they were not like the breads that you usually we get in other parts of india so it had you know quite an unusual taste in a better way you know a better taste one hand supported the basket on his head and the other banged the bamboo on the ground he would greet the lady of the house with good morning and then place his basket on the vertical bamboo we kids would be pushed aside with a mild rebuke and the loaves would be delivered to the servant but we would not give up we would climb a bench or the parapet and peep into the basket somehow one hand supported how he used to look he used to support one hand you know with one hand he used to support the basket and with the other hand he used to play the jhang jhang of the bamboo and when the lady of the house came usually the mother or the grandmother used to come he used to greet them he used to say good morning and then Then he used to place his basket. The children, the children said, "You know, you know, the children are very curious. As the children are very curious, they were always looking into, peeping into the basket. They were always curious that now, wow, you know, what baker baker had brought, uh, you know, today? Maybe he has, uh, you know, brought something, you know, very special." and maybe we'll you know get to taste something very tasty you know we are going to have a very tasty thing today children are often very curious even if they do not like to eat uh, the special things they you, you know they are very curious to look that what kind of things he used to keep in his basket and they used to you know uh, you know uh, surround him and he you know the elders of the house they used to push them with a mild rebuke with a mild scolding but they didn't relent the children did not relent they would not give up they would climb a bench either they would stand on a bench or of the parapet or the parapet parapet here means the fence of the house the fence the usually a wall or something and they used to climb that high raised thing so that they can peep into his basket i can still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves loaves for the elders and bangles for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth or wash our mouths properly and why should we who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the toothbrush now he is saying that i can still recall the typical fragrance the typical the typical fragrance here means a special smell 
टिपिकल मीन्स डिफरेंट The different. It was the smell was very different. It was not an ordinary smell. The ad. It was such a good smell of the loaves he used to have, and he used to love it. And the loaves were for the elder people because obviously the elder people used to eat the sandwiches and everything. But the children are interested in all the you know different kind of items. So, so the children used to love the bangles. Then we even did not. He said that we even did not care to brush our teeth, and he would think that who would do the efforts? You know they. at that time they did not used to have you know a simple toothbrush and toothpaste you know the lives are very simple nowadays we just have to pick up the toothpaste and toothbrush and we used to, you know we simply you know brush our teeth in a minute or so but in the earlier times it was very difficult the toothbrushes they did not exist and you had to you know pluck a mango bark you know you had to do datun kind of thing so he used to say that i used to you know uh, we thought that who is going to go into that much trouble who is going to do that much efforts to you know pluck the mango leaf you know that uh, mango stem and who is going to you know brush the teeth with it and it is not necessary and the excuse that he is giving is the tiger never brushed his teeth hot tea could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all and he was of the opinion that the tigers never wash their mouths now this is something that a lot of people use you know they are saying that the tigers don't brush the animals don't brush they eat everything like that only why should we brush and even you used to say when we'll have hot tea everything will be washed down you know the tea is hot it is going to clean our you know mouths then we do not need to you know actually brush our teeth so it is they are talking about the simpler times when people used to you know brush with the mango stem and they used to the children even they has used to have tea and everything but nowadays everything has changed now marriage gives a meaningless without the sweet bread known as bowl just as a party or feast loses its charm without bread not enough can be said how important a baker can be for a village now they are saying that the marriage gifts as they are incomplete without the boy and a party and a feast was incomplete without sandwiches it was incomplete without bread that a party cannot happen without the bread that is why if you can think that a party it is useless a party or a marriage function it is useless without the use of bread with no bread they cannot have a party so you can think that how important a baker is for the village the lady of the house must prepare sandwiches on the occasion of her daughter's engagement cakes and bolinas are a must for christmas as well as other festivals now they are telling that it is very necessary for their daughter's engagement people you know the ladies of the house they used to prepare sandwiches on those occasions like you know in the other traditions in other cities in other uh, you know um, states if we talk about we prepare puris whenever there is a party we prepare puris we prepare bhaturas we prepare parathas and chapatis in goa they used to prepare sandwiches it was a meal it is necessary for the lady of the house to prepare sandwiches uh, so obviously the baker is very important and even the cakes and bolinas cakes and bolinas christmas you know christmas is a festival that is being celebrated in goa when you talk about goa and like in other countries we celebrate diwali and holi and um, makar sankranti and uh, the other you know eid and uh, guru purab everything in goa you know most of the people you know practice christianity most of the people that live there are christians that is why they are fairly in love with cakes and bolinas and you know they celebrate christmas very dearly so that dearly that is why a baker is very important for a village does the presence of the baker's furnace in the village is absolutely essential the baker or bread seller of those days had the peculiar dress known as the kabai it was a single piece long frock reaching down the knees the presence of the baker's furnace it was very necessary for a village to have a baker a baker's furnace it was absolutely necessary it was very necessary it couldn't be avoided if there wasn't a baker in a village it would pose a very good problem you know very big problem people have to travel to other villages in other villages in order to collect the daily bread it was so necessary that is why there was a huge importance of the bakers at that time and what kind of dress they used to wear they used to wear kabai which was like a long dress the kabai is not shown here basically and the, it was kind of a frock that used to reach the knees it was a long frock you can search for the kabai uh, uh, in internet 
it was a single piece oh as i told you in our childhood we saw bakers wearing a shirt and trousers which were shorter than full length ones and longer than half pants now he's saying that when we were children the bakers they changed their dress and they used to wear a shirt and they used to wear you know um the pants which were not long and that the pants which were shorter than the half pants sorry longer than the half pants and shorter than the regular pants it was somehow kind of capri or something but you know longer than capri which goes you know under the knees but above the foot okay so this kind of um, cloth this kind of clothes they used to wear even today anyone who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees invites a comment that he is dressed like a padir even in goa that even even people if they still wear the pants like this those who go you know beyond the knees and you know it's longer than the knees the people say that okay you're looking like a father the baker usually collected his bills at the end of the month monthly accounts used to be recorded on some wall and pencil baking was indeed a profitable profession in the old days now he is saying that they are talking about the economic condition of the bakers here what kind of economic condition they had the bakers they had a profitable business they used to you know uh, the bills used to be you know paid uh, at the end of the month and everything was written on a wall it was written on a pencil by a wall by the lady of the house or by the owner of the house now as i told you that they are talking about the simpler times nowadays you cannot write anything on the wall even the children the small children the young children they are even not allowed to write anything on the wall because the beauty of the house would be you know affected but as at those time but those times the times were simpler you know it was no you know not much heed was paid on those things and people used to write everything down on a wall and they used to you know uh, you know uh, give money to him uh, at the end of the month and it was a profitable profession it was a profitable profession because everybody needed bread at that time the baker and his family never starved he his family and his servants always looked happy and prosperous their plump physique was an open testimony to this even today any person with a jackfruit like physical appearance is easily compared to a baker now they said that a person a baker's family never starved they never went hungry starved means they never went hungry they never you know they had such a profitable business you know their plump like physique they had a plump like physique plump like physique plump physique means that they were fat you know they were quite healthy in their look not healthy basically fat they were quite quite fat and any person they are saying that even if a person was very fat in goa and you know you used to look plump they used to say that are you a baker you just look like a baker you just like a pather you know like we say in india that you look like a seth you know the people who you know used to practice um, business earlier times they used to have a big you know paunch they used to have a big paunch because they always used to sit uh, in the shops and they used to collect money and they did not have any other work if you talk about uh, nowadays everybody is quite you know uh, serious about their looks and serious about their health and everybody is you know practicing healthy living and even uh, the seth jis and you know munims they are also not having a paunch these days but the bakers bakers they used to have and even you know nowadays it's not the same as i told you that when i used to live in goa and we used to collect the breads from there they did not have plump physique they were very thin you know they were quite thin compared to the other thing because now the breads are available everywhere the brands are here britannia golden harvest every you know every type of brand is here so the people may you know buy other kind of bread uh, also but still they do exist nowadays even if you visit today now the key points elders remain is uh, remain uh, reminiscing about old days the tradition of banking uh, <laughs> sorry banking it's baking so we can see that the olders are elders are reminiscing about old days they are thinking about the old days they are happily thinking about the old days and they are saying that the baking is still alive that profession is still alive fathers might not be there but the children are carrying on their profession they are getting nostalgic the uh, writer here is getting nostalgic about the childhood days at how they used to wait for the arrival of the baker you know how the baker was a friend and their companion and their guide you 
used to make us up with the jingling sound of thud people used to wake up by the jingling sound of the you know jingling thud of the bamboo and even you know writer also used to wait for the baker baker would enter with a jhang jhang sound with a basket on his head the basket was in on his head one hand rested on his head with the basket and the other hand used to make the sound with the bamboo marriages and ceremonies they were meaningless without bakers the presence of bake, baker was absolutely essential it was quite necessary in a village it was very necessary for the a village to have a baker because it was so much important as i told you that marriages parties christmas every function it was meaningless without the breads hence the baker now bakers was a profitable position they used to collect bills at the end of the month so as we have ended this chapter this chapter ended on a very beautiful note and that was that we often you know the things often remind us about our childhood days and we should you know as the writer is getting so much nostalgic about his childhood days a day will come when you will even think about your childhood days even still i guess you remember about your childhood days and you still you know you are reminiscing about the good old days that you used to enjoy and uh, you are also going to do it when you grow up so it's very important to re you know to live uh, every moment to enjoy every moment so that you can you know fondly remember your childhood days now okay the second chapter is kurg now if i talk about kurg kurg is called heaven on earth it's so beautiful it's so beautiful it's in karnataka it's a very peaceful place it has a very different kind of vibe compared to the other hill stations we talk about of india there are multiple hill stations in india but if we especially talk about kurg kurg is actually in the bucket list of a lot of people a lot of people want to visit there because the flora and fauna is so rich that the people want to you know enjoy it again and again now let's visit kurg he is saying that midway between mysore and the coastal town of mangalore sits a piece of heaven that must have drifted from the kingdom of god this land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial men beautiful women and wild creatures now he is saying that midway between mysore mysore it it is between the place is between mysore and the coastal town of mangalore it is it sits like a piece of heaven it seems like that you know a piece of heaven has landed onto the earth it is so beautiful why they are comparing it it's so beautiful that they are comparing it with heaven it's so beautiful heavenly beauty we say na from the kingdom of god this land of rolling hills rolling hills it's a type of hill you can say it's you know the hills are a bit of round in shape okay they are not very conical it's a bit of you know a round and they are saying that it is a proud race they have a proud race of martial men martial men means having to do with war the people who have participated in the war the people who are well equipped with weaponry and you know they have quite a knowledge about the wars and the weapons and everything those people are called martial and the women there are beautiful and the creatures there are wild Kurgur Kodagu the smallest district of Karnataka is home to evergreen forests spices and coffee plantations now kurg or kodagu you can see here that the other name of kurg is kodagu and it is the smallest smallest district of karnataka and it has evergreen forests what are evergreen forests evergreen forests are the forests which are green all over the year throughout the year throughout the year there is rain there and the there is always greenery there so evergreen forests are here and they also have spices and coffee plantations coffee plantations are usually in the places which has a lot of rain which has a lot of greenery evergreen forests cover 30% of this district 30% of the area is covered by the evergreen rain forest during the monsoons it pours enough to keep many visitors away the season of joy commences from september and continues till march now they are saying during the monsoons during the monsoons there is so much rain that the uh, visitors don't come there visitors here means the tourists you know usually the tourists don't visit kurg in this monsoon season they come from september till march 
you know from september to march we say in a tourist season the tourist season in kurg is from september to march because the weather is perfect at that time the weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for good measure some showers it means that you know there is a little bit of drizzle and obviously when it's drizzling the weather is perfect whenever you you know go somewhere whenever you are visiting a beautiful place you always want that there should be no heat you know we should travel you know travel properly and uh, our tour should not be interrupted by sweat and everything so obviously when it is when it is drizzling when you have a little bit of shower you know it helps a lot and uh, even the beauty it also enhances the beauty so the weather is quite perfect at this time the air breathes of invigorating coffee it breathes of invigorating coffee means that the smell of coffee you know even if we talk about the smell of the coffee is very good and um, there you can smell the original coffee plantations the smell comes here and it's so good it's so mesmerizing coffee estates in colonial bungalows stand tucked under the tree canopies in prime corners in the prime corners in the prime prime locations what do we call the prime location prime location is the best location in the best locations you can see coffee plantations and the bungalows colonial bungalows colonial bungalows means colonial bungalow here means that at the time of british of the british era when britishers you know ruled on us at those time on those times they used to make bungalows in uh, these kind of places and you know kurg is very beautiful it was quite a good hill station so they used to make the houses there even uh, if we talk about most of the hill stations most of the hill stations in india they have the colonial bungalows because the colonial at those time people used to live there people used to spend the holidays there the you know the british um, officials that used to live in india so it can be seen and un seen under the tree canopies canopies means canopies basically when the trees are so you know uh, high that uh, the uh, so high and so thick that when you look up you cannot see the sky but you can also only see the green color when you usually visit a evergreen forest you see that the sky is so green it is full of the leaves you cannot see the actual color of the sky so that is called a tree canopy the fiercely independent people of kurg are possibly of greek and arabic descent now they are also talking about the ancestors the ancestors which kind of ancestors these people had they had greek or arabic descent as one story goes a part of alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when return became impractical these people married among the locals and their culture is apparent in the martial traditions marriage and religious rights which are distinct from the hindu mainstream okay first of all let's talk about the greek ancestry if we talk about the greek ancestry the according to one you know story alexander's army alexander's army it moved to south south in the south india when they moved to south india they rested here along the coast and they had to settle here because they were not able to return you know at those time the proper roads were not you know built and uh, it was quite uh, a difficult position it was quite a difficult place to go back or to travel so when uh, they could not return the return was when it was impracticable they tried you know they uh, decided to settle down there then they married the people there they married the indian people they married the people the locals there and it can be seen which is it is quite apparent it is quite visible you know it is quite visible in the martial traditions the martial traditions match the ancestry of the greek people okay in the marriage and the religious rites which are distinct from the hindu mainstream it is very different it is distinct you can easily differ in the traditions of the kurg people of the kodagu people and of the hindu people it's very difficult it's very different you know obviously from this thing tells us that the ancestry is from greece the theory of arab originate uh, origin draws support from the long black coat with an embroidered waist belt worn by kodavus known as kufia it resembles the kufia worn by arabs and kurds now we talk about the arab ancestry how do we think why do we think that those are arabs the ancestry is from arab because it resembles the their dressing sense their dressing sense resembles of that of arab they you know uh, you know don long black 
uh, coats with embroidered waist. Now this is actually called a kufia and it resembles the kupia that people wear in Kodapu, that the people wear in Kurk. So it is quite similar to that. Kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers. Kurgi homes have a tradition of hospitality. It means of welcoming. They are very welcoming. They welcome the people. You know, they have pride. They are always ready to share the numerous tales of their fathers, of their ancestors, of their valor. Of their valor means of their courage. You know, they have a lot of stories. They tell the stories of their fathers that how courageous their fathers were, how they fought in a war, how they helped, uh, you know, to gain independence and everything. So they have a lot of tales to tell you. The Kurg regiment is one of the most decorated in the Indian army and the first chief of the Indian army, General Kariyappa was a Kurgi. Now this is a thing that you should, uh, you know, actually focus on. The Kurg regiment, you know, we have a lot of regiments. We have Gurkha regiment, we have Rajput regiment and the regiment which is Beha Punjab regiment the most famous of those is Kurg regiment and it is the most decorated decorated means it is the most awarded people have a lot of awards people basically have a lot of badges there which are won by the uh, in the and the times of war it, they are too too courageous the people are so courageous there even the first chief of the indian army general karyappa general karyappa was also a kurgi you know this question can come in your even uh, in your competitive exams this question is usually asked that who was the first chief of the indian army so it was general karyappa who was a kurgi because he was very courageous and the Kurgi people are very courageous. Even now, Kodavus are the only people in India permitted to carry firearms without a license. Now, see, they can carry firearms without a license. In India, everybody needs a license. If you have to carry a weapon, you have to, you know, have uh, a license. But the Kodavus, the Kodavus means the people who live in Kodavu, the people of Kurg, the Kurgi people, they do not need to have a license in order to carry those weapons. The river Kaveri obtained its water from the hills and forests of Kurg. Mahasir, a large freshwater fish, abound in these waters. Now they are talking about the fauna. First of all, they are telling the river Kaveri. You have read about a lot of rivers. Mahanadi, Kaveri, Krishna, Godavari. The Kaveri river, it obtains the water from the forest in Kurg. It is a peninsula river. And you know that the rivers that are in the peninsula of India, they, you know, collect water from the forest. It, they usually collect the rain water. So, Mahasir, Mahasir, Mahasir is a freshwater fish. You can easily find it there. Then the kingfishers, you can also see kingfishers there diving for the fish. Langurs drop partially eaten fruit for the mischief of enjoying the splash and the ripple effect in the clear water. Langurs, as you know, that langurs are quite famous for their mischievous acts. They are just as naughty and as mischievous as the human children. And what do they do? They, When they are sitting on the trees, they eat uh, fruit. And when they have partially eaten it, they throw it in the water. And they just love to see the rippling effect in the water like the children of humans do. Uh, and they, you know, quite resemble that. They are actually, the writer, it is a way of telling, it is a way of telling that the land is full of langurs and kingfishers and everything. And you can also see elephants. Elephants enjoying being bathed and scrubbed in the river by their mohots. By their mohots, mohots means mahavat. Mahavat means the elephant caretakers and uh, they are usually seen there scrubbing the elephants. The elephants can usually be taken, uh, seen taking bath from these rivers. The most laid-back individuals become converts to the life of high energy adventure with river rafting, canoeing, rappling, rock climbing and mountaineering. The most uh, I guess this is being repeated. The most laid back individuals became converts to high grappling, wrong climbing, and climbing, and mountain, and okay, from here, and mountain birds. Okay, 
the most laid back individuals here laid back individuals basically means the boring individuals who do not have that much adventure in their life they are saying that the people of kurg they may appear to be quite laid back they may appear to be quite you know uh, medieval but you see that they are the most adventurous people because they that place is something for you know a hub for the high adventure sports like river rafting you know what's river rafting okay river rafting uh, you can see in rishikesh uh, river rafting is done and canoeing canoeing basically means canoeing is a uh, you know a long uh, you know thin uh, you know a boat type of thing canoeing people do canoeing and they you, you know canoe 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 is basically called that the thing that you know actually dive with canoeing you can see in the youtube video i am not very perfect in, in explaining that what kind of thing is canoeing but it is an adventure sport and it in you know involves a lot of risk rappling means basically climbing down from the market mountaineering mountaineering means climbing climbing and rappling rappling means basically to come down the mountains and rock climbing rock climbing is also very famous this kind of adventure is quite famous there you can see mountain birds bees and butterflies are there to give you company when you are doing rock climbing when you're doing rappelling you can see that the birds and butterflies are accompanying you because they're also you know there in the nature with you macaws malabar squirrels langurs and slender lories keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy i do however prefer to step aside for wild elephants now he is saying that all these animals will accompany you you can see all those animals when you are visiting kurg but he is saying that i have to be you know careful of the wild animals because wild elephants you know wild elephants wild elephants are very angry even you know when you irritate them they are going to attack on you they can pose to be quite dangerous that is why he's saying that you have to stay away from the wild animals you have to maintain a safe distance from the from those the climb to the brahmagiri hills brings you into panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of kurg a walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64 acre island of nisarag dhama dham nisarg dham running into buddhist monks from india's largest tibetan settlement are nearby balakupe is a bonus a climb to the brahmagiri hills if you climb the brahmagiri hills you are going to have a panoramic view panoramic view means a 360 degree view of kurk okay if you climb brahmagiri hills you are going to have a 360 degree view of the whole kurg you can see the whole misty kurg misty means misty is basically you know a foggy a little bit of foggy kind of atmosphere of kurg because kurg is so beautiful it's so mesmerizing you can see a little bit of fog always it's there and a rope bridge the rope bridge leads to the 64 acre island of nisarg dham nisarg dham is also there and you will run into buddhist monks there you can see buddhist monks there and buddhist means you know who are buddhist monks he is a buddhist monk monk are the people who have you know renounced everything they have you renounced all their titles and all their family and everything they have just given up everything and they practice buddhist religion and uh, they look like this and the largest tibetan settlement is in balakupe it is a bonus because you when you see a buddhist monk it gives you a lot of you know uh, i can say that it gives you a lot of peace in your heart even you are driven towards the buddhist religion the monks can be seen in red ochre and yellow robes orange you can see the buddhist monks in red yellow and orange colors these are among the many surprises it means that when you go to kurg there are a lot a lot of surprises waiting for you and the buddhist monks are also there and these that wait to be discovered by visitors searching for the heart and soul of india right here in kurg they are saying that if you come to kurg there are many surprises that you can come across there are so many beautiful places there are so many beautiful things here and you will be you know you will thank uh, when you will visit kurg and it is such a beautiful place so kurg is a must visit it you should also add kurg to your bucket list because actually it's quite peaceful they have given you you know 100 reasons that you should visit kurg you know for the sake of beauty for the sake of nature for the sake of flora and fauna there fine okay let's talk about the key points it is situated between mysore and coastal town mangalore okay it is inhabited by a proud race of martial men beautiful women and 
wild creatures a coffee country famous for its rainforest and spices it is a coffee country it is a coffee country people of greek or arabic descent people of greek and arabic descent you can say that the people here either belong to the greek ancestry or the arabic ancestry they are very hospitable they are very welcoming and they are very friendly people the kurg regiment is one of the most decorated it is one of the most awarded people of kurg get the most awards of valor the large number of kingfisher can be found in the river kaveri squirrels and langurs they can be seen and they can be uh, you know seeing enjoying the partially eaten fruits they can be seen that they you know throw the water and they can see the ripples it means that it's it's very good it's very soothing to the eyes birds bees and butterflies can be seen there panoramic view of the entire landscape can be seen from the brahmagiri hills and it offers a lot of adventure sports you know to give you a, a bit of an adrenaline rush uh, to support that they you know have canoeing they have river rafting and every thing okay so it has everything for an ideal tourist now we'll start a tea from assam okay the tea from assam chai garam garam chai a vendor called out in a high pitch voice chai garam garam chai when you hear this phrase you of you know you remember about the railways you know you remember that okay you are sitting in a uh, railway you are sitting in a train and you hear this kind of sound this is a very familiar sound that can be heard he here the vendor the vendor is calling this in high pitched voice he's shouting garam chai garam chai he came up to their window and asked chai sahab give us two cups pranjal said here we'll talk about two friends pranjal and rajbir okay so now we see that they are sitting in a train and somebody comes to their window and he is asking them for tea chai sahab and the pranjal said that give us two cups okay they are enjoying two cups of tea they sipped the steaming hot liquid almost everyone in their compartment was drinking tea too okay they were drinking from the steaming tea cup they were enjoying they were relishing the tea and everybody else in the compartment was having the tea do you know that over 80 crore cups of tea are drunk every day throughout the world rajveer said you exclaimed tranjul tea really is a very, tea really is very popular now rajveer is saying rajveer is giving an information that 80 crore of cups are consumed in a day in india and pranjul is quite surprised by this thing by this number he is saying exclaiming oh the tea is very popular okay even if we talk about even if we talk about in the regular terms yes tea is very popular there is i don't think so that there is any household in india that doesn't have tea they have tea leaves you know they have the, all the you know ingredients ready for making a tea for preparing a tea even if they do not drink you know have tea themselves they do not drink tea themselves they are you know they keep the tea leaves because for uh, the visitors that come to their house for their relatives and everything that for the people who come to their house they might ask for the tea because tea is so much popular now even in, you know the people nowadays they have become very health concerned you know they are quite concerned about their health people have left drinking tea but still the alternates of tea can be seen everywhere so tea people uh, drink green tea these days they have herbal tea and everything but tea is an important part of their you know routine if we see okay now let's move further The train pulled out of the station. Pranjul buried his nose in his detective book again. Rajveer too was an ardent fan of detective stories, but at the moment he was keener on looking at the beautiful scenery. The train pulled out of the station. Pulled out. It means that it, you know, uh, went from the station. It left the station. Pranjul buried his nose. It left the station. Pranjal he buried his nose in a detective book. He was reading a detective note, and he buried his nose again. He started reading again. Buried his nose means started reading. He started reading his book again. 
in his detective book rajveer was an ardent fan of detective stories he was also a very you know um, popular fan of the detective stories but at this moment he was keener he was more interested in looking outside he was more interested in looking at the scenery is the beautiful scenery it was green green everywhere rajveer had never seen so much greenery before then the soft green paddy fields gave way to tree bushes now it was green and green everywhere rajveer had never seen something like that now we see that rajveer and pranjol they were traveling to assam they were going to assam and on the way rajveer was mesmerized by all the greenery by all the greenery that he could see out of the train he the soft green paddy fields paddy fields means rice fields earlier he could see rice fields and then after the rice fields he could see the tea gardens it was a magnificent view again the backdrop of a densely wooded hills a sea of tea bushes stretched as far as the eye could see dwarfing the tiny tea plants were tall sturdy shade trees and amidst the orderly rows of bushes busily moved doll like figures and the distance was an ugly building with smoke billowing out of the tall chimneys and now they are describing the view that what kind of view it had it was a magnificent view magnificent view means that it was a mesmerizing it was such a beautiful view against the backdrop now you know there were densely wooded hill areas there was densely uh, densely wooded areas of tea bushes and as far as one could see it was a sea of tea bushes and it was so beautiful in looking and they were dwarfing the tea tiny tea plants uh, you know after, uh, after you know behind the tea plants behind the tea plants were tall trees as well they could also see the tall trees and near them was a building there was a building which was billowing which was actually you know putting out the tall the smoke the smoke maybe it was a tea factory or something so they are trying to explain a view now if it look at rajvi rajvi is a boy who is enjoying the nature you know i should tell you that if you are visiting by train if you are visiting by um ek minute okay if you are visiting by train if you are visiting by any vehicle you should look outside you should not you know start reading books and everything now this is quite an old chapter so they did not have phone if they had phones at that time then pranjol would also be you know looking in the phone instead of the book now he was reading a detective book at that time he would be looking at a web series or something but we can see that rajveer is quite you know sorry pranjal was looking at the book now rajveer was quite excited to look at you know the beautiful scenery outside you know it tells you that you should enjoy everything that you see out of the out the window you should not basically you know look into your mobile phones or your books when you're traveling you should look outside and he was enjoying that thing a lot Hey, a tea garden! Rajveer cried excitedly. Pranjal, who had been born and brought up on a plantation, didn't share Raj Rajveer's excitement. Oh, this is tea country now, he said. Assam has the largest concentration of plantations in the world. You will see enough gardens to last you a la lifetime. Now. Rajveer is very excited and he sees hey a tea garden a tea garden is very excited to see a tea garden and now he is telling Pranjol Pranjol is not very excited because obviously Pranjol was born and brought up in a tea plantation he used to live in Assam he had been brought up in you know a tea plantation you know what's a plantation you have heard that in history books you have learned that in your geography books plantation is basically a place where one kind of a crop is grown over a large area and here in this case it is a tea plantation so in whole area only tea is grown so he has seen a lot of tea gardens and he is saying you know we are in assam in assam they have plenty of tea plantations are there so you need not you know cry every time you do not you know uh, shout with excitement every time you see a tea garden because there are hundreds of tea gardens here and it is going to last a lifetime you are going to see enough tea gardens that it would be enough for the lifetime you will not be able to you know watch a tea, uh, tea garden again you will not wish to see it again because there are so many i have been reading as much as i could about tea rajvi said no one really knows who discovered tea but there are many legends what legends now rajvi said you know i have been reading a lot about tea you know now rajveer was a person who used to you know dig up a lot of things he used to uh, you know uh, do all his homework he used to read about a place 
wherever he used to visit now he knew that i was going to assam and assam is very famous for the tea so he said that i have heard i have read a lot about tea and nobody knows that where tea originated from and now he is going to tell us very interesting legends that where the tea came from now the first legend that he shares was that there was about a chinese emperor who always boiled water before drinking it one day a few leaves of the twigs burning under the pot fell into the water giving it a delicious flavor it is said that they were tea leaves now he is saying that a chinese emperor emperor means basically a chinese king he always he always you know drank water water he always drank boiling water and one day accidentally some leaves fell into it and the water tasted good and he felt that okay the water is tasting quite good so just let's search he called his it is not written here but i have read that story that he called his servant up and he asked him that what have you put in the boiling water it is you know tasting so good so he searched and searched and searched and he found that okay these are tea leaves and uh, he started drinking it from there the tea started tell me another scoffed pranjal now pranjal was not very excited ha huh. pranjal was not you know happy with the story and he said okay tell me other we have an indian legend to bodhi dharma an ancient buddhist ascetic cut off his eyelids because he felt sleepy during meditation tea 10 tea plants grew out of his eyelids the leaves of these plants when put in hot water and drunk banished sleep tea was first drunk in china rajvira did as far back as 2700 BC. Now, the other one is the other legend was that there was an ascetic. There was an ascetic. There was a sadhu. There was once a Buddhist sadhu called Bodhi Dharma. He said that while he was meditating, while he was meditating, sleep was disturbing him. He was feeling sleepy. So what he did? He cut his eyelids and he, you know, threw it in the sand. When he threw it into the ground. that uh, when he threw that his eyelids in the ground 10 tea plants you know they sprouted out of it and it was tea you know whenever people you know drank that thing it would they would the tea leaves it banished sleep you know it is said now that whenever you drink tea you feel very fresh all the sleep is banished all the sleep you cannot you know uh, do not feel sleepy anymore tea was first drunk in china rajveer also said that tea was first drunk in china in 2700 bc in fact words such as tea chai and chini are from chinese tea came to europe only in the 16th century and was drunk more as medicine than a beverage he also added one more information he said that tea was started in china even the name chai and chini they originate from the chinese language and sorry the europeans the europeans you know they also used to drink it the tea it came in the 16th century and the people drank tea as a medicine they used to drink it as a medicine rather than a bab it was not simply a beverage it was not simply a hot beverage it was used as a medicine the train clattered into mariani junction the boys collected their luggage and pushed their way to the crowded platform Pranjal's parents were waiting for them. Soon they were driving towards Dekhia Badi, the tea garden managed by Pranjal's father. The train clattered into Mariani Junction. It basically here clattered means that it made a stop. It stopped in the Mariani Junction. The boys collected their luggage. They collected their luggage and they pushed their way into the crowded crowded platform. now as we can see that they were going to pranjal's house and pranjal's house was in assam so pranjal's parents uh, you know welcomed them and they were driving towards dekhia bari dekhia bari was a tea garden it was managed by pranjal's father and hour later the tree the car veered sharply off the main road sharply off the main road that it cut you know it went off the main road and they crossed the cattle bridge and entered dekhia bari tea estate first it crossed the cattle bridge cattle bridge is basically a you know it's not a very sturdy bridge cattle bridge you can search on google that how it looks they you know uh, crossed the cattle bridge and then they entered the dekhia bari tea estate which was managed by pranjul's father 
on both sides of the gravel road were acre upon acre of tea bushes all neatly pruned to the same height basically they or uh, they could see that it was a gravel road and on both the sides they could see the tea bushes all nearly neatly pruned neatly pruned means neatly maintained neatly cut you know it was neatly given a shape they were shaped into the same height groups of tea pluckers with bamboo baskets on their backs wearing plastic aprons were plucking the newly sprouted leaves they could see a group of tea pluckers tea pluckers basically means the women uh, women uh, the and matlab any labor any labor that plucks tea you can see uh, you have must have seen in movies and everything they you know they have a bamboo basket at their backs and they you know pluck the leaves like this it's quite a difficult process you know it's a manual labor it's a work of manual labor tea cannot be plucked by using machines and everything so it's of manual labor because they have to choose good leaves and they do it like this and they are wearing a plastic apron because the tea leaves colors okay if they not wear an apron then their clothes will get spoiled and they are very poor people so they cannot you know afford new clothes so they have to wear plastic aprons and you know one information i more uh, one information i have to share with you that the tea pluckers they are usually very poor they are poorly paid you can see in movies as well and you can see in reality as well that they are very poorly paid it has you know uh, even if you talk about darjeeling in west bengal it is one of the most poorly these this profession is among one of the most poorest paid you know professions so okay anyway so they were seeing you know seen uh, plucking the leaves pranjol's father slowed down to allow a tractor pulling a trailer load of tea leaves to pass this is the second flush of sprouting period isn't it mr barua rajmeer asked it lasts from may to july and yields the best tea now pranjol's father slowed down now he was they were coming by car now they slowed down because there was a truck load of you know tea leaves coming and rajveer asked that sir this is a second flush this is a second flush means it is the you know sprouting season this is a sprouting period you know mr barua rajveer asked and he said that yes it lasts from may to july and it ye, it you know it yields best tea the tea which is you know plucked at this time from may to july it july it yields the best tea you seem to have done your homework before coming now pranjal's father was very much you know impressed by rajveer because he had done his homework here he had done his homework means that he had done a lot of study about tea leaves as i told you that rajveer was such a person that when he came to assam to see the tea gardens he had already studied a lot about tea gardens and this is what you should do whenever you are you know going for a trip or something whenever you are visiting a monument whenever you are visiting a tourist place you must read about that tourist place you must read about its special places before visiting that so that is what rajveer had done and pranjal father was quite impressed he said yes mr barua rajveer admitted but i hope to learn much more while i'm here now he said that yes sir but i'm willing to learn even more so rajveer was a person who was you know of a good intellect and he wanted to learn more and more things about the tea and while he was listening in uh, you know staying in assam he was hoping to do even more so let's discuss about the key points pranjal is a young boy from assam and he is rajveer's classmate Pranjal visiting his home during holidays also invited Rajveer to accompany him we can see that Pranjal Pranjal was from Assam only and he invited Rajveer that okay let's go to Assam he was very excited he was very excited Rajveer was very excited and they saw a lot of people enjoying tea in the train tea is a very popular drink in the world Rajveer enjoying beautiful scene over excited to see so much greenery Rajveer on his way to Assam he was you know relishing the views there he was seeing the views there and he was quite impressed by that Pranjol did not share the excitement as he was born and brought up on a plantation obviously Pranjol did not share it means that he was not as happy as Rajveer because he had spent all all his life in a tea plantation he was not so happy looking at the plantations then they discuss legends about origin of tea 
it was discovered when a Chinese emperor, now they also talk about the Chinese emperor, while he was boiling some water, some tea leaves fell into it. And he enjoyed the taste so much that the tea was invented hence. Now they also talk about Bodhi Dharma, whose tea, you know, whose eyelids he, you know, threw into the ground and tea leaves, you know, they sprouted and people started drinking tea and used to banish the sleep. Then the word Chai comes from Chini, which is Chinese earlier. Now they also, they are talking about the, uh, that earlier people used to drink tea as a medicine, but not as a beverage. Pranjal and Rajveer, they entered the tea garden, the Dekhya Bari tea garden, which was managed by Pranjal's father. They saw acre of tea bushes, group of tea pluckers with bamboo basket on their back, plucking newly sprouted leaves. So this was the thing that they were enjoying. Now, all these three chapters were very beautiful. They, we talked a lot about the nature, the environment, the type of people there. Even in the Kurk chapter, we were actually feeling like we were uh, talking about, we were, you know, we are reading a geography chapter. So, I hope that you enjoyed the chapter and you loved the glimpses of India which was shared in this video. So, we'll meet in the next class. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.